giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rakakwadash, and Shalom to the Lord's elect, the true elect of the nation of Israel. Uh, all praises and glories due to Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth. <coughs> so, you see the title <coughs> of this video on screen. Okay, um, uh, Judas Goats, Spies, Agent Provocateurs, Double Agents. They're all in this ministry. They're, they've all been called to be in this ministry. And that's pursuant to um, what is written in the book of Jude. And um, this is one of the reasons why we that are of the hopeful elect that really believe in this knowledge, this truth, that we be vigilant in this ministry because you have individuals calling themselves men of the Lord, right? But they're really not. They're really counterfeit. They're really fakes. Or like they say, they're really fugazi. Okay? And it's our job to spot them and to avoid them. Uh, the subtitle of this video will be called, This Israelite Thing Has Been Infiltrated. Absolutely. And we're going to go through some scriptures to prove this. I mean, when you think about Judas Iscariot, he was actually chosen by Yahweh Shai to betray Yahweh Shai. Now think about that. Yahweh Shai knew that eventually Judas Iscariot would betray him. Matter of fact, let's get a scripture where Yahweh Shai said this, have I not chosen you 12? Let's get that. Chosen you twelve. There you go. This is the book of uh, John six, and I'll start at sixty eight to build it up. John six and sixty eight. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Now, this is shortly after a certain group of disciples left Yahweh Shai after he made a statement. Okay? When you read the whole story. So, Yahweh Shai turned to his disciples and, and he said, Are you going to leave also? And that's when Peter made that confession, like it says here. Uh, the subhead in Peter's confession of faith, John 6 and 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Walked no more with who? Yahweh Shai, because of a statement he had made. They, they, they became offended, right? So reading on, it says, Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? So here comes Peter's response. Then Simon Peter was the head of the disciples, right? Which became apostles. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And that's the way we feel. And I know I say this beginning with Elder Paston down. That's the way we feel. There, there is, where is the truth? The truth is here. We have the truth. There is no other truth. What we're involved in, what we've been involved in for the last, well, starting with Apostol for the last 40 years, you know, almost 40 years he's been in this thing. I myself, 35, almost 35. There is no other truth. This is the truth. When we believe this wholeheartedly with our hearts, that this is the truth, what we're learning, what we're into, what we're involved in is the truth. And we also believe that when Yahweh Shad comes back, He's going to reward us for being faithful to the truth. That's our belief. 
But there are certain individuals that's, that have been brought into this thing that don't share that belief. They really don't believe in the truth. All right? And they were actually brought in by the Spirit. They were actually brought in by the Spirit to fulfill their destiny. And their destiny is to betray the truth. Just like Judas Iscariot's destiny was to betray the truth. Like the Apostle Paul said, who have resisted the Most High's will? If the Most High's will for you is to be 100% about the truth, 100% true to the truth, then that's what you're going to be. But if the Most High's will is for you to be a betrayer to the truth, even though you might have not started out as being a betrayer, but along the lines you became a betrayer for whatever reason, that's your destiny. You have to fulfill it. The same thing with Judas Iscariot. That was his destiny. And to show you that he was uh, he repented, but it was too late. He was chosen. This is scary, man. This thing is scary. This, this thing is no joke. This ministry of ours is no joke. Think about that. Judas Iscariot was chosen to be a betrayer to the truth. He betrayed Yahweh Shai, did he not? Well, there you go. So it's the same thing we have now. We have guys that have been brought in. Their destiny is to betray the truth. They're either going to become spies or Judas goats or Asian provocateurs, you name it. Okay? So this is what, this is the subject matter of this video, to warn you. That's why you got, you got to know who you're moving with, man. You can't just move with, with any brother. As a matter of fact, let me, let me, uh, I'm going to come back to the scripture for every brother for every brother not every brother is a brother <laughs> I'll say that again not every brother is a brother that's why we're not buddy buddy with everybody man you never know and, and you're going to hear the brother and I'm going to show you the video that inspired me to do the subject this morning you're going to hear the brother say um, how do you say it, it I'm going to play the video at least most of it is a pretty good video. I'm trying to remember how he said it. He, um, yeah, right now I can't remember. But it'll come back to me when I play the video. But he made a profound statement. That brother who did the video. And I'll, I'll show you. This is Jeremiah, the ninth chapter. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is how he said it. He said, you never know when one guy is going to flip. And you know, you know what we mean by flip. You never know when one guy is going to flip and go to the other side. Hell, even, um, let's look at it, even Elder High Priest Ariai went to the dark side, man. Now we know why he went to the dark side. King Masha, King Masha told us he prophesied, which proves King Masha was a prophet. All right? He gave, he gave the clue. And it was heavy the way he said it, King Marshall. He said that at the the Cornelius Council. He said, um, he said, y'all talking shit about Ariel, you better read the third chapter. And what he what he was alluding to was Zechariah the third chapter. And when you read Zechariah the third chapter, it tells you the prophecy tells you that that uh, Joshua the high priest would be clothed with filthy garments. And that's a metaphor for the nonsense that Elder High Priest Ariel got caught up into. And we believe by faith that he had to be that Joshua the high priest. Okay? He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Not everybody is going to hear that and understand it. Okay? But anyway, going back to Jeremiah the ninth chapter. It says, take ye heed every one of his neighbor. Right? You got to watch who you're moving with in this Israelite thing of ours. <laughs> There's a clue in the Apocrypha. It says, a brother may be known uh, through adversity so if you move in with a guy and he and and um you move in with a brother and he, he you go through adversity and and he's right there with you he's he's helping you out chances are there's a good chance that that is a real brother okay um again i'm just quoting what the apocrypha says it says a man may be known a brother a brother may be known through adversity this is a guy that will go with you through thick and thin, man. Now, even certain guys like that could flip on you. It could happen. But that's usually a good sign that that 
guy might be a real brother because he, he he he's go he's going through the through the of adversity with you. He's sharing your adversity. He's sharing your pain. And likewise, you're sharing his pain. You know. Again, I'm just going according to what the apocrypha says. Um, a brother may be known. It says may be known in adversity. As a matter of fact, let me get that for you. May be known in adversity. So, you know, you, you can't be simple-minded in this thing of ours. You can't just accept anybody. Especially if they, they, they're filled with uh, uh, flattery. That's a major red flag. <clears throat> I always tell you, brothers, about the story of King Canute. He got tired. He got fed up and tired of his, his courtiers. Keep, they, kept, they kept flattering him. And he taught them a lesson. Read the story of King Canute. Read the story of King Canute and the seashore. So you can get the moral, the moral of the lesson. Uh, let me see. I, I, that is in the Apocrypha, so. There we go. The book of Ecclesiasticus 12 and 8. Remember, as it is written, the scriptures are able to make us wise unto salvation. So you got to read, we, we got to read these scriptures, man, and apply them. All right, um. I'm going to go to the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 12 and 8, also known as Sirach. Ecclesiasticus 12 and 8, because we're at the end, man. We're at the end. So if there's ever a time to be more vigilant than ever is now, especially now, because we're at the end. And the end is just like a great movie. The end is going to be filled with surprises. You better believe it. A real good movie, a real riveting movie, you know, usually is towards the end of the movie when there's filled with surprises, filled with, uh, you didn't see that coming. You'll be like, shit, I didn't see that coming. You know, filled with uh, turns, you know. We've all seen movies like that. Right? Where towards the end of the movie, you didn't see that coming. You're like, oh, shit. You know? Ecclesiastes 12 and 8. It says, a friend cannot be known in prosperity. That's right. Yeah, because when you're in prosperity, everybody wants to be your friend. Because they want what you got. A friend cannot be known in prosperity. And an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. Yeah, there you go. Because when you go through adversity, all your so-called friends desert you. So now that one guy that's hanging in there with you, chances are that guy is a real friend, which the word friend is from the Latin slash Italian fratello, which means brother. The word friend literally means brother. In the Italian is fratello. Fratello, fratelli is brothers. Fratello is brother. Okay, so I proved that point. So let's go back to what I was reading about in Jeremiah. Then we're going to go back to John 6 to make the point. Jeremiah 9 and 4, take ye heed every one of his neighbor. So you got to watch who you're moving with in this thing of ours. And trust ye not in any brother, right? For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Yeah, so you got your Judas goats out there, you got your, and you never know when they're going to flip. Okay? You got your Judas goats out there, you got your spies, you got your agent provocateurs. You should know what an agent provocateur is. That's a guy being brought in, and when the moment presents itself, he's going to commit something that's going to bring the whole group into trouble he's he's there to provoke to to stir up trouble all right and he had been hired for that purpose so when he stirs up the trouble now the opposition can come in and blame the whole group he's an agent provocateur you have them in the truth 
you have your spies. He, this guy's he this guy's set up the spy and, and and see what you're doing and go report it, go report back to the 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 authorities to the opposition. We know who the opposition is. We're talking about Esau, right? The Edomites. They're the opposition to this thing of ours, right? So that's the job of that guy. That guy, he's his job is to spy, see what you're doing. And then, and if you do something so he, they might deem illegal, then he goes back and tells tells his superiors whatever. He's a spy. Then you have your agent provocateurs. They, they're there to set up trouble. They create something, and then they uh, get the whole group blamed. And then you have your Judas goat. Again, he's he's... The Judas goat is just like the agent provocateur. He'll he'll set up some some nonsense. You get caught up in it, then he slide. <laughs> Where did he learn to slide like that? Inside joke. He'll slide to the side while you get caught up in the mix. He's a Judas goat. The scriptures say we got to be wise, man. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. This is these are the things we got to look 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 for within this ministry, and and guys that fit that mold. You know, certain individuals that fit that mold because they're there. They have been chosen. Again, remember the words of Jude. We're going to read that, the book of Jude. These men have, uh, as a matter of fact, let's just go to it. Let's just go to it. We're going to come back to Jeremiah. Let's just go to it real quick while it's fresh in my memory. Let's, let's just harness the energy of these words. Jude, the first chapter. And uh, the fifth verse. Bear with me for a minute. Yeah, here it is right here. We'll start at the fourth verse. We started the third verse. Now, it was to uh, make a comment to this uh, book of Jude, F number one, Jude, this Jude was Yahushai's biological brother. Yahushai had five, five. Yahushai had four biological brothers. Simon, Joses, Jude, and James. Now two was in the, uh, in the ministry. Two was of the apostles, the head apostles. Uh, you know that the, the when I say the head apostles, Peter was the head, but you know, beginning with the uh, twelve. Okay, Peter was the head of the twelve. So, uh, the head apostles, as in the ones chosen by Yahushai, that's what I mean by the head apostles. Jude and James was was of that ilk, right? And Jude and James was Yahushai's biological brothers, right? And both of them wrote books. James wrote a book, right? And Jude wrote a book. This is the book that we're reading here. So now it was Elder, uh, Elder, uh, Elder, um, trying to remember his name. I'm having a brain fart moment right now. Yashuamba. Elder Yashuamba, getting old, you know. Elder Yashuamba, who he was the first one that I heard say that um, that uh, uh, the the book of Jude came about during the time of an uh, apostasy. That's why Jude wrote it, and this is after Yahweh Shai had been uh, crucified and then risen. All right, uh, Jude wrote this book. All right, I'm not sure the exact year. It had to be maybe in the 40s A.D., maybe in the 50s A.D., and this was during the time when you had you had a lot of individuals that at once followed the teachings of Yahweh Shai and then denounced it. They became apostates. So Jude was warning the rest of the congregation of these apostates. That's why he wrote this book. So now what he wrote here applies to today remember as it is written there's no new thing under the sun okay so we can learn a lot from what jude wrote here and again it was elder yashwamba who uh 
who uh, the, was the first that I heard say that. He Obviously, he researched Jude and um, why Jude wrote that book. And that, that gives us even more understanding, okay? Because you had them back then. So in, in Jude 1 and 3 now, let's read it. It says, Beloved, when I gave when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. It was needful and exhort you, right? Because part of this ministry is exhortation, edification and exhortation, right? It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Now, why is that? And that, that, that's a message to us today. We should earnestly contend for the faith, fight for the faith. Fight to stay on the right path of truth, man. All right, that's a daily fight with us. That we don't go off, you know, that we don't become reprobates. Your Judas goats, your spies, your agent provocateurs, they're all reprobates. They're all reprobates. Reprobates of this faith, Okay. It says, and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, the true saints, right? The elect. Now, why is that? Why is Jude saying that, with, that we should earnestly fight to defend this faith? Why is he saying that? Let's read the next verse. For there are certain men crept in unawares, just like now, right? Right? There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained, ordained by who? By the heavenly father, Yahweh. Right? Yahweh bar Shem Yahweh Shai. They were chosen. Just like the heavenly father chose, chose his elect. We all know this. The heavenly father chose his elect even before the earth was created. But guess what? The heavenly father chose those that are not part of the elect even before the earth was created. Okay? They're just, we're just here to play out a role. Okay? We're just here to play out a role. And like the Apostle Paul said, we can't resist the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. If the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is for us to play a good role in this thing of ours, we're going to play a good role. What's, what, what do I mean by a good role? We're going to be the true shepherd. We're going to be the true teacher. We're going to be a member of the elect, the true elect. But if our role is to be the opposite, that's what we're going to be. It is what it is, man. Okay? That's, that's the cold, hard truth of this thing of ours, man, this ministry that we're involved in. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. These, these are powerful words ungodly men so they're ungodly men they're not right okay turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness okay which basically means wickedness right and denying the only lord power so that's one of the things they're going to do eventually they're going to deny the heavenly father which his true name is yahweh and the son's name is yahweh shai just like uh, Judas Iscariot, he denied Yahweh Shai. Okay, he sold him out, did he not? So that's part of denying Yahweh Shai. And he was chosen to do that. We're going to see that when I go back to the book of John, the sixth chapter. He was chosen to do that, Judas Iscariot. He was chosen to deny Yahweh Shai. And he was chosen by Yahweh Shai himself to deny Yahweh Shai. Now, how powerful is that? And it's the same thing you got now. The same certain guys you got now. They were chosen even before the earth was created to deny, eventually deny this faith. To become a Judas goat or to become a spy or to become an agent provocateur or just to become a straight out, flat out reprobate. That's how scary this thing of ours is. That's why it is written, we're, we're to serve Yahweh Barshim Yahshai with fear and trembling. Now you know why it says that. Because you just never know. And that's why we got to examine ourselves daily. And you notice I'm saying we. We. That includes me, man. We got to examine ourselves daily. I've been in this thing going on 35 years. Man, 
there's never a day where I say, yeah, I just know I'm a man of the Lord. The Apostle Paul said this, we are prisoners of hope. It's the same thing with me. I'm a prisoner of hope. I hope that I am a man of Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. And it's a daily fight with me. It's a daily struggle. And I've been in this thing almost 35 years. Okay? It's a daily fight. It's a daily struggle. And it's supposed to be. Okay? So there you go, man. And and, and you better believe it. I, I believe in that scripture wholeheartedly. Examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. Sometimes you examine yourself seem like every hour of the day. Because it's so easy to go off. And it's so hard to stay on the path of truth, man. Those are facts. So we got to examine ourselves daily, man. Got to. Whether we be in the faith and that we're not a reprobate. We got to pray. We got to fast. We got to do whatever we got to do to stay on that path of truth. Until we finish, you know, finish the work and receive the prize. What is the prize? First salvation and then that crown, man. That crown that Yahweh Shai is going to place on the heads of every member of the true elect that defended his gospel. That defended his truth. Which he got that truth from his father Yahweh. See? So that's a message from me to you brothers out there, man. You brothers that really believe in this thing of ours. <clears throat> it says, turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord power and our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's get back. So they're out there, man. Your spies, your, you, you name it. That's why in Jeremiah, Jeremiah warns us, Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. They're going to slander us too, man. Your Judas goats, your, your, your agent provocateurs, they're going to slander us. Marvel not when that happens. You're going to be looking like, this guy was part of us. Then why is he lying against us? Well, that was his job. That's what he was set up to do. <laughs> He's doing what he was set up to do. <laughs> and they will deceive everyone, his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Wow. They, thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Yeah, there are more deceitful guys in this thing of ours than there are true ones. It's like almost like we are, and I say that, you know, based upon hope. It's almost like we are out, outnumbered by the by the uh, deceitful workers. We the true ones. All right. That's why Jeremiah said it. He said, "Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me." Save the Lord of hosts. Right? Save the Lord. Okay? There you go. Now let's get back to John. So again, Yahweh uh, actually chose the guy who would, who would deceive him and, um, and uh, betray him. And Yahweh already knew he would deceive him and betray him. It's not like Yahweh Shai didn't know, but he but he chose him. Why did Yahweh Shai choose or chose the very man who would betray him to fulfill prophecy? That's why. To fulfill prophecy, the prophecy of how Yahweh Shai would end up being the sacrifice of the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. He had to be betrayed first. So there had to be a guy chosen by even before the earth was created, there had to be a guy chosen. That would eventually end up betraying Yahweh Shai. And that guy was Judas Iscariot. And Yahweh Shai knew it. John 6 and 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, Will you go all, will ye also go away? And this includes Judas Iscariot. He was among that twelve when Yahweh Shai said that. But look at the, look at Peter's response. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Exactly. And we believe and are sure that thou art the anointed, the son of the living power. Now, 
Peter made that statement. He said, we, including all the rest of the disciples. But guess what? There was one disciple who really didn't believe. Okay? He really didn't believe because he would end up betraying Yahushai. And who might that disciple be? Judas Iscariot. This is why Yahushai made this response. Yahushai answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil? One of you is a devil. Who was he talking about? He was talking about Judas Iscariot. Let's, let's read the next verse. He spake, this is powerful. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. But at that time, they didn't know that. They had no idea. The rest of the twelve had no idea that Judas Iscariot was the guy that would betray Yahushua. Had no idea. So that's why the brother said in the video, you got to be careful. You don't know who's going to flip. Okay? And that's just the mentality you got to have, man. So now let's go to the video. All right? Let's go to the video. Bear with me for a second. <clears throat> Shalom, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha Kwadash. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom, Labakarium, Shah, Yasha Allah. That's peace to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Who you're looking at here on the screen is this. we focusing on this guy right here. This is um, the face of an agent. This is a face of a traitor, a man who is. Who has turned his back on Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah years ago? Years ago, you know. In the name of this show, this is um, what's the name of this show? No Jumper. No Jumper. This is a popular YouTube handle ran by a guy named. He's a small hat, Adam something. You know, I see. I catch it every now and then. And this is uh, this guy's second time on the show. Um, the first time, you know, he should have been up there, you know. Um, he, he was going off, just going on the show, being unequally yoked, you know, the type of talk and what's happening on his show. But this time he had took the cake. That's why I say this guy is an agent. This this goes be a little beyond, actually a lot beyond um, unequally yoked. You know? And some of these guys, they, they do that. <laughs> they do that to serve their own belly, their own vanity. You know, they, they, it's two things with these dudes. They're looking for the money and they're looking for the fame. You know, the money first, number one, and fame for a close second. And, and this ministry is not about that. It's not about garnering the world's money and the world's fame. Even though eventually the Lord say he's going to make us famous. He's going to do it, but we, that's not our purpose. Our purpose is we're not in this ministry to garner the world's money and the world's fame. Like these guys, like you see these guys do. <clears throat> Let's read that. The book of Romans, the 16th chapter, the 17th verse. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Now here's the point. For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai. So these these individuals, your, your Judas goats, your your agents, your spies, your reprobates, in whatever capacity they they've been called into this ministry, they all there's a common denominator with all of them. They're not serving Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai. Right? They're not serving you. How about Shem Yahushai? What are they serving? But their own belly, right? Their own vanity, their own person. Like it says here over in the NLT, their own personal interests. All right, let's read that in the NLT. Romans 16 and 18. Such people are not serving Yahweh Shai, our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. And and each each one of them has have a personal interest. Like a spies. Your Judas goats, your spies, your um, your agent provocateurs, they have a personal interest. What is their personal interest? 
to serve the ones who hired them, who gave them the bag, right? You got, you got these phony Israelites out there chasing the bag, man, sold out for the bag because they want to live that soft life. You know, the king, like Elder Pastor says, the kingdom of heaven is not coming to them fast enough. They want that kingdom now. They want to live that, that lavish life now. We're not in that time for that. We were, we've been brought in this knowledge, this truth to suffer, man. And to suffer for our wickedness, for the sins that we committed. That's why we've been called into this knowledge, this truth. This is a chance for us to, to make it right between us and the Heavenly Father through Yahweh Shai by suffering. As it is written, before honor comes humility. Humility is part of the suffering. We're going to get the honor in the kingdom. When Yahweh Shai places that crown on our head, then it'll be time to be honored. Then it'll be time to party like never before. Then it'll be time for that. But now is not that time. We've been, we weren't called into this knowledge just true for that purpose. We were called into this thing to suffer. Again, Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, the first verse, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul from temptation. What, whatsoever, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Meaning suffer, you're going to suffer. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. There's another scripture where it says, uh, uh, the fiery trial. Let's get that. The fiery trial. This is why we're called into this thing. You brothers have to understand why you've been called into this thing, man. You've been calling this thing to be tested. To see if you have the moxie, if you have the, 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 the minerals to, to endure the suffering. Then you get the prize. That's how this thing works. You got a lot of guys, do, they do not understand what they're involved in. They really don't. <laughs> they, 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 do, they do not understand this Hebrew Israelite ministry of ours. They don't. And you can see it in their actions. First Peter 4 and 12. Look at the, su look, uh, look at the subheading. <clears throat> Share the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. This is why we've been called to experience the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. The same thing we're going through, Yahweh Shai went through and more, man. Think about that. The same thing we're going through in the sufferings of being in this thing, suffering in our body, our minds, whatever. Yahweh Shai went through the exact same thing. Okay? And more. He endured things that, that that's unimaginable for us. Okay? <laughs> Look at the, the NLT uh, uh, label, the heading. Suffering for being a, a Christian. There you go. Which a Christian is what? Another term in the, in the Hebrew is uh, Mashiach. Or Mashiachim, the Christians, Mashiach, which means anointed. In the Greek is Christos. Okay? We're approved by what? By the sufferings. That's how we're approved by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, if we can endure the sufferings. Let's read it. First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, test you. And, and the, the, the trial is really going to get fiery when they make this this microchip mandatory. That's the game changer. Elder Pastor have been saying that for a few, uh, well, a couple of years now. About a couple of years, he's been saying that 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 the uh, the the microchip is going to be the big game changer. Absolutely, we can see it, because because we're going to be living in a totally different America then, when Esau makes that chip mandatory. The Bible tells us the Bible, the scriptures don't lie. It tells us that this man is going to be as a madman sparing none. As he, as he goes about to, to cement his new world order. And, and remember, it's all about the new world order. That's what it's all about. That's the biggest game in town, the new world order. Who's with it and who's against it. The ones that's with it, uh, Esau promises them a future, whatever. The ones that are, that are against it, Esau wants to eliminate them, destroy them. And there ain't no in-between, man. Either you're with it or you ain't. We're talking about the new world order. And, and the shining star of the New World Order is to have everyone chipped, everyone microchipped. That's what they want, the top banking families. That's what they want. And that's the most important prophecy on the table right now. A lot of brothers, they're getting caught up with the, the noise. And I call it noise because the Bible speaks about the rumors of wars. It says wars, and how wish I said that, wars and rumors of wars. You look up the word rumor in the Italian well, you look up the word, um, the Italian word for noise is rumore. 
That's where you get the word rumor from. So that's all noise with what's going on with Iran. and That's all noise, man. R wars and rumors of wars. The main prophecy you should be focused on right now is when Esau, because that prophecy must and will be fulfilled, when Esau makes that microchip mandatory under the penalty of death. That's the main prophecy, because that's the big game changer. That's when America is going to be totally different. To coin the term prison planet, that's when America is going to be truly a prison planet. When they make this microchip mandatory, which they will do, because that's what the top banking families want. And let's go beyond the top banking families. That's what the Heavenly Father wants on the left-hand side, because the Heavenly Father controls these top banking families on the left-hand side. Just like King David said, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. They are the sword of the Lord on the left-hand side. These top banking families, and they work through Satan, which Satan gets his power from the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. You see that? So, going back to 1 Peter 4 and 12 again. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, test you. So we're all being tested through this fiery trial. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Huh? See, when you were called into this thing, that's when strange things began to happen to you. And your life, it seemed like your life was turned upside down. Yeah, that's the trial. Now, some guys, they can't deal with it. So they'll tap out. So they'll become a Judas goat. They'll become a, a, a which it was, it, was cho it was chosen for them anyway. For them to become that. That's what you got to understand. Look at Judas Iscariot. Okay? He's a perfect example. So they become a, a, a Judas goat and a, an agent provocateur. Right? Because they couldn't deal. One of the reasons is because they couldn't deal with the suffering. Let's read that in the NLT. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. You see that? And that's when you... that's. As soon as you came into this ministry, <clears throat> that's when those things started happening. But rejoice. So rejoice. This is a message from Peter to us. Rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Yahweh sufferings. If we endure to the end. Notice I said we. If we endure to the end. That's the key. We have to endure those sufferings all the way to the end. When is the end? When Yahweh comes and destroys the society. And now it's time for him to give reward, as it is written, to give reward to his servants, the prophets, to quote that scripture. But we got to endure to the end. But rejoice in as much as ye, ye are partakers of Yahweh's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, see that? When, what is that going to happen? When he comes back. That's part of his glory. When he comes back, he's coming back in power, as it is written. He's coming back in power and glory. Yahweh Shai with the angels to destroy this, this Esau society, to destroy Esau's dream of this new world order, to destroy it. And then Yahweh Shai is going to set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. That's the real new world order, which by default is the kingdom of Israel. Okay? So it says, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Yahweh sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. And that's where we want to be. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. I want to be, I want to be one of those guys, man, rejoicing in exceed with in exceeding glory. Exceeding joy. Okay? Because think about it. Our bodies are going to be changed. First of all, we're going to escape certain destruction. That's number one. Number two, our bodies are going to be changed. Number three, he's going to place a crown on our heads. <laughs> you, can't, you can't even put a price on that. Instead, 1 Peter 4 and 13 NLT. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partakers with Yahweh Shai in his suffering. You see that? Now, why don't these other Israelites tell these guys that? Tell them what they're really involved in. No, they, they paint this truth with, with rose-colored glasses. Okay, they, they show you the beauty, only the beauty of the, this truth. They don't show you the grittiness of this truth, the down and dirty of this truth. They don't show you that. And that's a damn shame. But, and, and that shows you're following, the wrong, you're following the wrong guy. 
Okay? You got to learn the bitter as well as the sweet, man. You got to learn the bitter as well as the sweet. And a, tr a good shepherd, a good teacher of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, he's going to show you the bitter and the sweet. How about that? It says, instead, be very glad for these trials make you part partners, partner. <laughs> now Jake says that. These trials make you partners. So it makes us partners, these trials that we go through, makes us partners with Yahweh Shai and his suffering. Because he suffered. Look at how, you can't tell me Yahweh Shai didn't suffer. We can read about it. So that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Oh man, that's going to be powerful. My goodness. Okay. And as it is written, yeah, when his glory is revealed to all the world, as it is written, behold, he cometh from clouds and every eye shall see him. How about that? That's part of his glory. What's his glory? Them chariots, man. Them chariots alone are glorious and powerful. <sighs> Okay, so there it is. Um, so back to Romans 16 and 17, so we can go back to the video. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Read on, it says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai. So that's your Judas goats, your, your agent provocateurs, your reprobates, your spies, your bug outs. You name it, man. All right. <laughs> and they're all in this thing of ours if you don't believe that then you, then you don't understand what you're involved in for they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai but their own belly their own personal interests and by oops bear with me for a minute uh, Romans 16 and 17 is being delayed uh, Romans 16 and 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple, man. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay? So let's get back to the video. A little beyond, actually a lot beyond, um, unequally yoke. You know, um, <laughs> We of the hopeful elect, you know, this time is coming when, you know, agents working for Esau or just making their own moves and doing the wrong thing is going to start popping up. And the persecution is about to start because, um, you know, we all being followed, men of the Lord, that's going out to the highways and byways. You know, we got all kind of agents that's following us. Um, I got a, um, an image that was sent to me by the Ak, you know, uh, Kazakh, he's coming out friend. He said we got all kind of agents following us. Is that scriptural? Better believe it. Spy out our liberty. Let's get that. Spy out. I remember years ago, and I told you guys that story with Mike. You know, when the Apostle Tar made that statement. This was a school in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He said, look, we got spies in here. And uh, Mike put his index finger... And he, and he curled it up and he wove it, wove it around, wave it around or whatever. And he said, and he said to him, back then it was just, you know, uh, you know, to her, you know. Uh, now we, you know, we address the man as he should be addressed, Elder Apostle Tahar, but back then it was Tahar. So Mike said, Tahar, I've checked all the men in here. There's no spies in here. You know, that's, he kind of talked like he had a, he dragged his voice when he talked, Mike. My caller. I've checked all the men in here. There's no spies in here, Tom. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. I was, it was right outside the school. And we just, you know, Pastor just looked at him and shook his head. I don't know if he responded to him. Oh, he might have said, you you might be a spy. <laughs> Knowing Elder Pastor, he's very, Elder Pastor is very, uh, he, he doesn't mince words, man. He's very straightforward. Reminds me of my father. My father's just like that. The only difference is my father don't know the truth. They don't hold back in their mind, you know. They speak their mind, you know. That's the personality Elder Pastor has, you know. Um, and Yahweh Shai was that way. Think about it. Yahweh Shai was, the, the scripture speaks about Yahweh Shai being an austere man. Okay. That's the, that's the nature of an austere man. He doesn't, he doesn't hold back. He, he speaks his mind. 
Anyway, Galatians, the second chapter, the fourth verse, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, the same thing Jude says, the same thing Jude says, unawares, right, brought in, they crept in, the same thing Jude said, Jude, Jude mentioned um, them creeping in, all right, this Apostle Paul, he wrote the, the book of Galatians, which was a letter to the Israelites in Galatia, he said, and that because of false brethren, so your Judas goats, your, your agent provocateurs, your, your bug arts, your, your reprobates, they're all false brethren. What are they? They're not true brethren. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty. So you got spies, man. Came in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Yahweh Shai. There's an account where spies were brought in to spy on Yahweh Shai. And they feign themselves righteous men. Let me show you that. You have to understand what you're involved in. And you have to move with wisdom. You have to, you have to know who you're moving with, man. You can't just trust any brother, man. You remember what 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 uh, uh what uh what Jeremiah said, trust ye not in every brother, for every brother will utterly supplant. Fame. I know the word fain is in there, so it should come up. Yeah, it is right here. This lines up with what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians. Luke 20 and uh, Luke 20 and uh, 19. This builds it up. And the chief priests and the scribes and, and the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him. They, all, they were always looking for ways to destroy Yahushua. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. Yeah, they, they, the parable Yahweh had taught was really against the wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. And they kind of perceived it, so that inflamed their anger. And they wanted to get at Yahweh Right? So the 20th verse. And, and them same, wait a minute, them same wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, they're back now. They're back now in this ministry, masquerading as, as men of the Lord, which they're not, which they are not. And from the spirit, they've been chosen to be fakes, man, to be phonies. And it's only a matter of time till they're revealed. Remember, Yahweh Shai said, there's nothing hidden that shall not be made manifest. Everything is going to be revealed. Your true servants of Yahweh Shim Yahushai and your fake ones. It's all going to be revealed, man, by the time Yahweh Shai gets here. So check that out. Luke 20 and 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, right? Acting. They were acting as if they were just men, righteous men. You know, you're, it's usually it's usually your holier than thou types. You know, the holier than thou. Hey, you, you ever check out the spy? The spy is the guy. He ain't trying to make no trouble. He's the coolest guy in the group. <laughs> you don't get no problems out of him, right? <laughs> Not that I'm saying you're supposed to get problems out of the true men. But every now and then you're going to, you know, if you're real, if you're true to this, every now and then you're going to buck up, man. But then you repent and you get back on track. But the spy now, the spy, the guy that is the spy, the guy that is the spy, he's the coolest dude in the group, man. He gets along with everybody. <laughs> And then, and then when you when you check it out, the guy's a he's a he's a spy, or he's a he's an agent provocateur, or he's, or he's a Judas goat. He gonna get the group in, into some hot water and step to the side, while they have to deal with the fallout of that of of whatever he creates. That's your Judas goat. That's your that's your agent provocateur. And they're in this thing, man. Luke twenty and twenty, and they watched them and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men, righteous men, that they might, listen to this, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and the authority of the governor. You had that back then, you got that now. You got that now. You got guys that fit that bill now, right now, even as I speak. That's why we have to be vigilant. Okay? You have to understand what you're involved in. 
Let's read that in NLT. Maybe you get a little more clarity. Watching for their opportunity. And that's what the oh, that's what these spies and Judas goats and, and agent provocateurs are waiting for. They're waiting for their opportunity when they can strike. Okay? Watching for their opportunity, the leaders sent spies pretending to be honest men. They tried to get Yahawashai to say something that could be reported to the Roman governor so he would arrest Yahawashai. You see that? <laughs> so you got them now. Let's get back to the video. You know, uh, Kazaki's coming out fringing with us and um, there was a, a, a black truck filming me and the Akdem Yad, you know, as we was going in, this was sometime last week. But um, as he was filming us, you know, he was being filmed or, you know, I had pictures taken and, you know, it was sent to me. So we got all kind of agents, you know, our phones are tapped, you know, they following us around in the street at your job. That's why brothers got to be vigilant. That's why you can't be that. Now you understand beginning to fell the post on down. When you see all the responsibility he has. That's why you can't be buddy buddy with everybody. Okay. The scripture in the Apocrypha speaks about he, he is light-minded, that's hasty to credit a friend. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. That's a sign of, of light-mindedness. You, you're quick to accept everybody. Hey, how you doing, brother? Hey, yeah, come to my home, brother. Hey, what? Hey. You know, come on, man. Come on, man. You can't be like that. You got some seriously wicked individuals out there. The Lord said it. Among my people have found wicked men. And the most wicked are those that claim they're in the truth. Twofold the child of hell. We have to know what we're involved in, man. You know, we're swimming among sharks out here, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you the, if they drop you in a pool and the pool is filled with sharks, you're going to swim carefree or you're going to swim with... with uh, first of all, you're going to want to get out that water. That's first and foremost. But if you have to swim in that water, you're going to swim very cautiously. You're not going to swim like, like as if you're on holiday down in the, down in the islands and, and nothing is bothering you. No, you're going to swim. You're going to sw you're going to swim cautiously because there's sharks in the water. There you go. So I hope that analogy made everything clear. You know, um, but what they're going to find them in the Lord is in that Bible, you know, living clean lives in the Bible. We in and out. We not following around with Babylon. But you're going to have guys like this that's going to be used. They're that's going to be it. used against the ministry. That's They're going it. to be connected to illegal activity. And it's going to be thrown. And we spotted that guy a long time ago, man. He had all the charm. <laughs> he, the red flags were flying high. <laughs> flapping in the breeze. All right. On the ministry to make the ministry look bad because they want to remove the men of the Lord completely. They need to smear the whole Hebrew Israelite thing. You know, you heard what the brother said? Isn't that what I just read concerning those spies that were sent to Yahweh Shai? Let's read, in case you weren't paying attention, Luke 20 and 20 in the NLT. Watching for their opportunity, the leaders sent spies, pretending to be honest men. They tried to get Yahweh Shai to say something that could be reported to the Roman governor so he would be arrested or so he would arrest so he would arrest Yahweh Shai. All right? And it's the same thing now, the same thing with Yahweh Shai's men. Remember, Yahweh Shai said it best. He said, uh, if they have persecuted me, they shall persecute you also. So all the men of Yahweh Shai, they're going to go through things like that. Be set up by false brethren. The Apostle Paul spoke about that because of false brethren brought in unawares false brethren let's read that it's the subject matter of this of this lesson false brethren brought uh, yeah oh well I, I think I might I may have read that I may have read that Galatians 2 and 4 and that because of false brethren br false brethren unawares brought in yeah I did read that who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Yahweh Shai, that they might bring us into bondage. The same thing with Luke 20 and 20. Watching for their opportunity, the leaders sent spies, pretending to be honest men, 
They tried to get Yahushua to say something that could be reported to the Roman government so he would arrest Yahushua. And that's why we got to be careful how we speak. We got to qualify what we say. We got to be careful how we speak, especially in the time period we're in now. Let's get back to the video. Israelite thing. That's why they put a tag on it, the black Hebrew Israelites. And it's going to be men like this. And it's, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. This is premeditated. He don't care about the backlash, you know, which makes me. Yeah, he's a highland. He don't care about the backlash. He don't care about the sheep. He's in it for his own personal interest. We just read that. The scriptures don't lie. Now, it's up to you, brothers and sisters out there, to spot guys like that within the ministry. I mean, this is old news. We've we done knowing about this guy. But there are others masquerading out there that are among us, man. It's only a matter of time until they reveal themselves. All right? You have to know what you're involved in. You know, he may be working with them damn feds, man. He may be working it directly with the feds because... You know, on this show, as you're going to see, you know, they got drugs, illegal guns. These are connected, active gang members. And he pledged an allegiance to a, a, a gang, you know. and Yeah, the Hoover Crips. And I looked it up, read a little bit about it. You know, what, what the origin of the Hoover Crips and where it, was it, where it goes back to. It goes back to that crazy state known as L.A., Los, An Los Angeles, <laughs> L.A. We love it. <laughs> he used to have a commercial like that. Uh, L.A. is dying, man. L.A. is L.A. L.A. is on its deathbed. You know, shout out to that guy, uh, <laughs> Metal Leo. <laughs> he did that video. <laughs> L.A. is on lease. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's walking downtown L.A. And most of the businesses were either boarded up, <laughs> empty, or the sign saying for lease. You know, so L.A. is dying, man, just as America is dying. And these gangs, they were set up by the wicked elite, man. The, the, the grassroots members, they don't know what the hell's going on. They're just sheep. They join a gang. They're proud to join a gang. I'm with the Hoover Crips, dog. <laughs> you know, they're proud to join that stupidity. But the heads of these gangs, the, the top leaders, they know what, what time it is. They're all pledged allegiance to this new world order. Their job is to stir up chaos to bring about that order. That's their job. That's what this, that's the purpose of the gangs. Stir up chaos to bring about order. Oldest trick in the book, man. Doesn't matter what gang you join. Okay? And here's this guy who ought to know better, call himself repping the, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's just move on. He unput his Is this guy not a Judas goat? Is he not a is he not trying to set up the ministry for something? Is he not a Agent provocateur? I mean, <laughs> what more proof do you need? Oh, camp, all them Sakari guys, you know, in jeopardy, man. He put a target on it. And let's not forget the Sakari, the origin of the Sakari. The Sakari were hitmen. That's one of the terms for hitmen, Sicario. They were not the most spiritual guys on the block. They were carnal dudes, man. Okay? They were troublemakers. Read read the history of the Sakari. And even this dude, when he read it, he said, Yeah, that's gotta be us. That we them dudes. You're right, you are them dudes. Ungodly men crept in unawares, brought in. He was brought into this ministry to cause the here they here they come to cause trouble. It's kinda like what Yahweh said, fill ye up then. Let me get that. Fill ye up. Fill ye up the measure. There you go. There it is right here. Yahweh I said this. When he was cursing out those wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Let me see where I'll start. Yeah, 29 verse. Matthew 23 and 29. Warn to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. This guy calls himself a chief priest. Chief priest. Remember, it was the chief priest that had a problem with Yahweh The chief priest that had a problem with Yahweh Shai, man. Because they, they were fugazi, they were counterfeit. Yahweh Shai is the true chief priest. Who's the true chief priest? Yahweh Shai is. Okay? 
Matthew 23 and 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you, ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. A bunch of hypocrites. Yahweh uh, was checking them through the spirit. He said, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves. That's why it is so important for us to examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith. Those, you know those guys didn't examine themselves. Wherefore ye be witnesses among, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye, you, are the children of them which kill the prophets, which means they're, they're the ones that kill the prophets because there's a thing called reincarnation, okay? And here's the point. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Yeah, so they're back. Those same characters are back now in this generation to fill up their measure of iniquity, to fill up their quota of iniquity. So when Yahweh Hashem Yahushai bring the judgment on them, it's well worth it. That's what Yahweh Shai meant by that. Matter of fact, let's read that in the NLT. Matthew 23 and 32. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started because they are their ancestors. It's through reincarnation, regeneration. They are their ancestors coming back to do the same wickedness they did back in the past. And it's the same thing now. These guys have been calling to this ministry now to fulfill what they did in the past so that now when the judgment is brought upon them, it's well-deserved. Let's keep reading. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. There you go. That's your Judas goats, your, your, your spies, your, your agent provocateurs. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye, how can you escape the damnation of hell? What's, what's the damnation of hell? When Yahweh Shai comes with those chariots and bring that fire. Also the nuclear missiles. That's the hell is talking about. That's for to come. And a lot of them guys are going to they're, they're gonna be kept preserved until that very moment when Yahweh Shai comes. Yahweh Shai is going to have a personal interest in destroying them. Remember, it is written, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they that pierced him. So Yahweh Shai said he's coming for revenge. He said the day of vengeance burns in his heart. So those same individuals that persecuted Yahweh Shai back then, they're back here now to receive their, to receive their, their uh, reward. Right? To receive their reward. And what, what is that reward? Destruction. Okay? Let's keep reading. It says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. Those are the true elect. And some of them ye shall kill and crucify. Yes, some, some of these brothers will be taken by these, these Judas goats. Because they were they will set up, you know? It is what it is. Some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Wow. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacchaeus, or Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Wow. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation, right? This generation now. So those guys are back to get their judgment for all their wickedness. You know, and many of them, the judgment's going to be those nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord zapping them into oblivion. Eh? And if the chariots of the Lord don't get them, the nuclear missiles certainly will. So how about that? Let's get back to the video. You know, in jeopardy, man. He put a target on their back. You know, after some of the things that was said up here, you know, it's about a two hours some show. I was just skimming through, skimming through. You know, you can't stomach to listen to this stuff. You know, but I just needed to hear what he had to say, and the spirit stopped me at this part, which I'm gonna play here. But you gotta know, you gotta know that these type of men are gonna be used to come against the true men of the Lord in these last days. You know, um, let's get this here. Absolutely, facts. This is, um, this is, uh, one second, Salakia. Just like Judas Iscariot was used to come against Yahweh Shai. And that was towards the end of Yahweh Shai's ministry. 
So we're almost to the end of this ministry. So it's going to get pretty goddamn exciting, man. This is Jude 1, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, meaning they got a job to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to be, we, you can't be too mad. You just got to go with the flow because the offenses must start. Yep. You know, we at the end of this thing, the final prophecies are popping up. Yeah, that's right. Offenses must come, but woe unto them by who the offense comes by. And the reason why offenses must come because the prophecy must be fulfilled. Remember, this, this is the Heavenly Father's movie and everything got to play out according to his liking. Oh, so... We need the persecution to start. You know, you're going to have men like this of old, foreordained, you know. He don't even know what he's doing. He's being controlled by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shah. Absolutely. To bring in. You know, prove that. Uh, Ezekiel 14 and 9. If a prophet, let's get that real quick. If a prophet, Ezekiel 14 and 9. Heavenly Father controls the false prophet too. And it's right here. He, the Heavenly Father makes the false prophet hell. Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. This thing is scary, man. I'm telling you. That's why the smartest thing we the smartest thing we can do is fear Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, man. Serve the Lord with what? Fear and trembling. Hoping that we're not a reprobate. Hoping that we're the true, a true man or woman of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. A true brother, a true sister. Or even your sisters too. Okay. Hashem Yahweh To bring in the persecution. Sort of like how Judas was set up by the Lord to play his part. Everybody got a part to play. Right. And he's playing out his part, you know, and the Lord uh, rolls him up quickly in position so that he can play his part. But these yeah. men are foreordained. That's yeah, that's heavy. Sometimes the heavily, well, at least the novice being, oh, ho, 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 wait a minute, novice. And that guy, uh, Gorilla Hebrew, whatever his title is, the guy is clearly a novice. If you really scrutinize him, you show, you, you, you'll see just how much he doesn't know. He's a novice. All right. These novices, they're lifted up with pride. You just heard what the brother said, right? This is First Timothy, the third chapter, six verse. Not a novice. We can't be novices. Least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. <laughs> there you go. The devil got that boy. And play his part. But these men are foreordained. That's that's the point. You know, they're agents. You know, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Mm -hmm. Ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, into lasciviousness Wicked. and denying the only Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, and our Lord, Hamashiach. So, yeah. Well, going back to Gorilla Hebrew said Yahweh doesn't need to be worshipped. Yahweh shouldn't be worshipped. And that's that's tantamount to blasphemy. Even the angels in, in, in the hev in heaven worship Yahweh Shai. As it is written, they all bow before Yahweh Shai. Okay? So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. You're gonna you, hey, you're gonna have this. You know, men that's you know look like they were in the spirit at one time. And then towards the end. Look at how comfortable he looks. He looks, this guy looks sitting with those reprobates. Why would you even go in a pro, no jumper? What? You won't see Elder Pastor or any of us head Great Millstone, the, the, lead, the leadership, so to speak. You won't see us engage in folly like that. That's folly. We're only here for the elect, man. All right. The Apostle Paul told Timothy to commit these words unto faithful men, which shall be able to teach others also. We ain't going to waste our time going on, on reprobate crowds like that. It's a waste of time.
And look at how he's sitting. He's laughing. He's, he's getting that fame. He's soaking in that fame. That fame is, is intoxicating his brain. You know? He's thinking as he sit, sits there, oh, this podcast is seen by millions of people. I finally made it. I've made it. Look, Ma, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> Gotta have fun with this. They're gonna have to play out their part. Listen to this, man. And the thing is, this is a message to you brothers out there. It's not about that. It's not about fame. You were called to do a job. You were called to, basically, you were called to suffer. All right? Scripture speak about, uh, what was that, Lamentations? How's that go? He have borne it upon him. He suffers quietly, something like that. Born. I hope I find that scripture for y'all. Because it's a powerful scripture. Lamentation. Yeah, here we go. I'll show you it's not about fame, man. Being in this involved in this ministry. Let's let's go to Lamentations, the third chapter, the 26th verse. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly, quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, quietly wait. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. And indeed, it is a yoke. A lot of you brothers are finding that out. And you thought this thing was going to be easy. I can handle that. Now, you finding out that, that it's, 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 it's different. You find out it's not so easy, huh? <laughs> to be involved in this thing. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth, right? Now, here's the point. He sitteth alone. So most times you're going to be alone. All right? You know, when you ain't around the brotherhood, you're alone. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he have borne it upon him. Yeah, man. It's like you're suffering alone. And nobody, no one can, especially a person that's not a, that's not a brother, they can't understand your pain, what you're going through. Even certain brothers can't understand what you're going through, what you're suffering. So you, you've been reduced to being alone. And many times Yahweh himself was alone. Scripture, we read about the scripture where he, he dip into the mountains by himself. That's what we're involved in, man. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. All right? <laughs> That's powerful. So this is not a thing of where you're garnering all kind of fame and people are ooing and aahing at you and worshiping you. and No, 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 no. If, if that's the case, then chances are you're not a man of the Lord. You're not a man of Yahweh Shai. Man. Go ahead, don't call my phone. Don't call my phone. I don't even need to say it. This guy is sitting there yucking it up with these with them reprobates. Hey, well, hey, he's called for that purpose, man. I don't want to can it. Can that shit. I don't even want to hear it. The message is in. So, the message is in. I don't even want to hear it. I said, I said, Champagne Poppy is a person of, you yeah. know. He's an active he's members active. now. You know? Yeah, these are the yeah, active members of uh, these gangs, these dudes. Whatever happened to be be not unequally yoked with unbelievers and have no no fellowship with them. And you see how comfortable what's his face look sitting there. He's almost like he like it's a family reunion. <laughs> he's sitting there as all as if this is a family reunion. Talking about uh, uh, gorilla Hebrew. He's 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 a he's a. a a cautionary tale for you brothers out there, man. All right, definitely. These men, they, they're in the game. So, you know, illegal guns are on the set, drugs, you know. These guys need protection when they walk the street. And they plant this guy next to these guys. These, look, he hangs, Gorilla Hebrew hangs with these guys on his off time. It's a reason why he's up here. And his security guard got shot this morning, so he'll yeah. get back to me later. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And that's very well true. They may they very well may use footage like this to tie in the Hebrew Israelite to get to to be affiliated with gangs. 
Oh, the Hebrew Israelites? Yeah, yeah, they're affiliated with gangs. Yeah, they're part of the gang. The gang culture. <laughs> Amazing. He got some shit going on. He got some shit going on. Oh, good. They slide the cat. I didn't know they didn't give a slide the cat. I thought guns weren't even nigga hair guns. Y'all right there. Y'all giving them the guns. You right there. Yeah, Seattle right there. Yeah, y'all right there. Y'all giving them the guns. And this guy said, yeah, you right there. What? Are you seeing this, you brothers and you, you sisters out there? Can we tell? Can you see why we tell you to be vigilant? Now the scripture should be coming to mind. Trust ye not in every brother, for every brother will utterly supplant. They will speak lies. Uh, how's it go? The one in Jude uh, crept in unawares. <laughs> Yeah, but it's still, you know, we're still Canada like a little border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is funny, man. This is funny. You know what? From now on, when we speak about the Israelite thing, we shouldn't even mention that group. When they say, ain't Sakari, so who? So what? Ah, no, we don't recognize those guys. Those guys are rogue. Those guys are reprobates, beginning with their leader. It shouldn't even be mentioned. In the circle of truth, the true brotherhood, they shouldn't even be mentioned, man. And that's just my opinion. No, we we, we interviewed you before. You yeah. uh, read the Hebrew, but what's, what you been on recently? Like, what, what, what's been the, the path you've been on right Man, you know, just, just working, you know, as far as, you know, just trying to get the message out and try to help, you know, influence. influence Nothing about people. prophesying. Nothing about prophesying. You, you got to listen to them. Just working, just trying to get... First of all, what he should be doing, if he was a true brother, is, first of all, he, he shouldn't even be there, number one. Second of all, if he was a true brother, being among them, them reprobates, he should be cursing every last one of them out and telling them that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is going to judge them and destroy them. That's what he should be doing, then walk the hell out. That's what a real prophet would do. But again, now you know why you got these characters masquerading as... Men of the Lord. Chief priests. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. All right. Hopefully you were edified by this video. You want to go check this video out by the brother Saints of Jersey. I, I subscribe to his channel. I don't know the brother's name, but eventually I'll get to know his name. Uh, the name of the video is Gorilla Hebrew Can't Be Trusted. He's working against this truth. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So on that note, see you in the next one.